Welcome back to Anno 1800. Since the last episode, I have done several things, and I have to confess that I kind of have lost track of what I've done. Now, part of the reason of this is a uh, real-life situation, um, which I'm not going to go into right now. But I will go into it later when it is more appropriate to talk about it. So, I'm not entirely sure where I should begin. Uh, I think we got up all of the uh, fuel oh station God, stuff and the farms gosh. in the last episode. Um, I think this one is new, the motor assembly line. Uh, I have built a couple of cargo ships. I have definitely bought more than a few specialists because, uh, yeah, uh, you see, I, I have uh, quite like, like 19 port dealers. I'm probably going to sell off a lot of them uh, eventually. Uh, I have four Ferras al Zarami. Uh, I have a couple of these hybrid epic seeds because the 25% productivity is nice. Not so much because of the fertility they provide, but because it's nice with the additional 25% fertility. I think I talked about Angela in the last episode, so she shouldn't be new. Um, I bought a couple of new of these books here. Um, yeah, that's some. That's actually something that is relevant to talk about. The this one is really good, but yeah, I also have some expeditions going on. This captains of industry thing here. It says 25% additional workforce, 20% additional income, and then 40% additional chance of illness. Now, that probably seems like a rather nasty um, malice, but really it isn't. Uh, if you have proper hospital care, I even used the one that gives 60% higher chance of illness, and I think it gives 40% each of workforce and income per house. It's a purple item. Uh, I think also that one is called Captain's of Industry, but I don't remember. But I used that in my um, uh, solo game that I didn't uh, record, and I didn't notice any increased uh, illness happening or inc incidents. But one thing that is important to note, I haven't entirely figured out the correlation here, because this thing here... You see, this one says moderate illness chance. Uh, now, if I find a fire station here, it says very high fire chance. And I think, or rather, I thought that that would be in the area around that specific fire station or hospital. Uh, out here, too, it says very high. There's nothing out here that really can burn. So this might... No, this one says high because I was wondering, could it be island-wide? But that doesn't really make sense either. Down here is moderate. But anyways, what is important is to look at the actual houses, where you can see that this does say very high, but the house says none. By chance, none. And there isn't any... Uh, yes, yes. There is no chance of illness at all. Here we have a very low fire chance and very low illness chance. In This is a bit farther away from, uh, let's see, the center it's building here. Girl, low, none, very low. Uh, still, this says moderate, and, and this one says very high. Um, no fire chance at all. The pub, no fire chance. The bank... No fire chance. I'm not sure. I, I don't get the... Why does this say that while the buildings that are relevant has a completely different um, statement? If anyone now has an explanation for that, then please do feel free to share. Now, one thing that I definitely know that I have done is that I have set up oil production on Rindhoven. And... Uh, this one is full, or the track is 
used, but I think the um, oil harbor is full anyway, so I'm not sure we really need a parallel track here. And I've also set up a, an oil power, no, an oil harbor down here on Brizzlewich. And four grape farms or vineyards. Care. Now you can see I have a efficiency of 445%. Which means that the pr processing time on these vineyards is at 26 seconds. The normal processing time of a vineyard is 2 minutes. Which means that I've been able to... Let's see here. If I just do that if I take... Uh, I th just to make sure that my math is correct here. I take 100 and... 20 times 4, that is 480, and then I divide that by 26, I get 18, so 18.46. So this is basically producing as much as 19 and a half vineyard would be producing, if my math is correct, which, to be honest, it might be completely wrong. Math is not my strong suit. But this is enough to... Uh, to uh, cover our need for grapes, which we are using to produce champagne. Now, how did I get all of this productivity? Uh, obviously, the tractors is one of the reasons, because that increases the productivity by 200%. In addition to that, I have this trade union here, where I have a medal-winning producer, who affects a grain farm, red pepper farm, a vineyard, and a hacienda grain farm, and adds 40% productivity, in addition to giving one champagne every eight cycle. I have the hybrid grape vines, which adds a 25% productivity. And I'm also using Alexander Hancock, who adds 80% productivity. And yes, he does add 35% more modules, so each of these requires 236 modules. But, you know, that's not a big problem. Uh, not with that high of a productivity. So with Alexander Hancock, I definitely feel that it is worth the additional modules to get that much productivity. So this is up and running, uh, back on the chateau. Uh, it's no longer the throne, it is now the chateau. And the reasons for that is that I wanted things to be easily ident identifiable here with the main city on the top. And then the estate is now the manor of Bliv. Uh, I believe I have built a champagne cellar here somewhere. But where? I haven't. I actually have not built a champagne cellar yet. But I have removed the baker and replaced him with Chef Michel, which took me several million to get, even though I did... I did uh, let the Eli reset many, many times. But sometimes you just don't get the specialist. It's the same with the costume designer and the actor. Sometimes you just have to wait and wait and wait and wait and i don't care for building a cannery without having chef michel because i don't want to set up the artisanal kitchens they're a nuisance to set up so that's one of the things that i've done um obviously i have a steam shipyard i don't think i've done much else uh it's been a lot of waiting. It's been a lot of... Uh... Oh yeah, I have done something else. I've done... Uh, I've, I've actually set this up to be uh, a proper city now. It's a quaint port town, but uh, I have a little bit more stuff going on. This is a self-sufficient uh, city that doesn't require... Well, no, it isn't entirely self-sufficient. It actually does require schnapps. So I have a trade route going up here from... Um... The... This one. The one that is transporting iron from uh, the manor also takes schnapps back with it to uh, to the manor from the chateau. Uh, and this is not a problem because the uh, chateau is producing ample amounts of, uh, of schnapps. 30 per minute, whereas we require 17, so if I pick both of them, I still overproduce by plenty. I am planning on using uh, schnapps and... Uh, What was the other one? 
Oh, this is the wrong one. Schnapps and work clothes. I'm planning to use those for uh, the dockyards. Yeah, we are mostly good. Five per minute. Uh, that might be the limit of what Madame Kahina is able to procure for us. So I might have to go set up some coffee production, actually. I did set up the um, public mooring, which I do want to upgrade to a tourist mooring. Uh, we can do that right away. I have a quest for that. So let's do that. Uh... Tourists flock to city in droves. Not really. Uh, I'm not going to build any hotels. At least not yet. Sure. Uh, let's just keep that quest here. I'm not going to do anything with it. The reason why I wanted to unlock this is because this gives us access to the tourist ornaments. Go away. And uh, the tourist ornaments are really, really... Particularly the cherry trees. They are so pretty. I do love love the uh, the pink colored pink is not really a color that I like, but the, the sakura trees oh they are so beautiful. Get them both with and without uh, paving underneath. So those I really want. But the other one the, the, there are others here too that are nice. The the iron tower kiosk is very pretty. Uh, I like the ornate pavilion. I'm not a huge fan of the parasols, but I mean, I could use those at the uh, the restaurant areas. Luggage cart and luggage. That rather meh. Musician stage? I don't know. It looks a bit... Oh, it does get an orchestra. Well, maybe I can use that then. It even has Nate's song on it. Interestingly enough. The signpost is kind of pretty, although it does say hotel. So I'm, I like to have these uh, ornaments here available. I haven't played around with the tourists before. I know you have to build the hotels and you have to build bus stops at the uh, relevant locations. So we would have to have bus stops at the... Uh, uh, you can see that it highlights the buildings that are relevant for the bus stop. So those three buildings would require a bus stop. We would have to have a bus stop at the mooring itself. Um, and obviously if I have hotels, those would also require bus stops, but it wouldn't be very interesting in going down into this area for obvious reasons. Anything else that I can think of at the moment? Mm, no, I don't, I don't think so. I think we're all good. What I also want to do in the episode is to start Docklands. So, let's go to Engineers, I think. Actually, it's on Artisans. Docklands Main Wharf. Uh, this thing down here, uh, I'm going to change this up as the Docklands uh, expand. But I'm going to place down the Docklands now, because the Docklands also count as a Harbour Master's Office, where I can put specialists into. And I do know that the modules for the Docklands take three, exactly three grid tiles. So this is six. So this would work, but I would want it two more. No, one more. Let's put that there and let's give it a road. Um, like so. Uh, we have five depot modules. That is a lot. The depot modules... I thought they had a... They don't. Interesting. You can build a depot module there. Oh, please go away. Build a couple of depot modules. No, I can only have two modules. Why does it say you can build five when I only... What? Go away. Depot module limit 0 out of 5. That is weird. So we'll want to have an export office or two. And we'll also want to have loading wharfs.
that. And I think we can set up a pier as well. Uh, this one is... This is just a basic uh, initial setup. I want it to be connected because the Docklands will give us 255 attractiveness. So we're up to 1235 attractiveness with this. Here's our first tourist uh, ship. I wonder how much money this is going to uh, give us. I think it's going to give us a substantial amount of money, actually. And the Docklands cost us... say I'm not sure where all that money goes the tourist mooring does cost us more maintenance and I don't really know if I I think I might just downgrade it again but I have something that is costing us a lot of money now anyways it's not like money is an issue let's go into the exports and imports and we will start exporting schnapps we will export work clothes I need to figure out one more export here. Maybe fur coats. Champagne is something that I definitely do want to export. Little fish are careful who they swim with. Yes, indeed. A little bit hard to select the final one. Maybe bricks. Because we are definitely getting a lot of... What? Where? Oh. Well. Having a fire station down here might not be a bad idea. Hmm. Let's see. Um, I'm not sure what... Should we export as the final good? Schnapps, definitely. Uh, work clothes, because even with the manner of Bliv, we are producing enough schnapps. I can't produce, or I can't export that much of the, the schnapps as I can of the work clothes, but. Sausages. Ah. Can export a little bit of fur coats, I suppose. What I really want to do is set up a couple of champagne sellers so that I can export champagne. Uh, Tobias shouldn't be here for a while yet. Now, I don't know what I'm going to import because I need to import something as well. And we don't have much choice here. It's these goods or nothing. Potatoes, we have enough of those. Pigs, wheat wood, fish, sausage. Okay, I think we're going to just import some soap. We'll sell that to Eli as well. Take 200 of those and uh, 300 of these. I will probably not want to export sausages. No, champagne is the one that makes most sense to uh, to export, actually. He'll be here in 15 minutes. Let's see. Uh, champagne seller required... That's 30... So each of these champagne, champagne sellers is going to produce one bottle of champagne every 15 seconds. The fire has been vanquished. How does that work then? That means it's going to require four tons of grapes per minute. And I'm producing uh, rather a lot more than that. Rizzlewitch. 12. I can build four champagne sellers. No, three. Three, sorry. I don't think I need to build that many of them. I don't think we have that much glass available either. Let's see here. Uh, I might also want to have a trade union attached to the champagne sellers. Uh, but I don't want to... 
I don't want to change these. These are too important. Uh, and as for these, I could get rid of the general foreman. But there's not really that much room over here. And the champagne cellar is a rather large building. It's not that large, actually. But I don't think I can fit another uh, trade union in this area. I would have to squeeze this further that way and squeeze this further that way. And probably also this way so I could fit one down here or something. You know what? I'm not going to bother with that right now. Uh, so let's just build a champagne cellar. That should... Yeah, so that takes four glass per minute. And it takes four grapes. And it means we are producing four tons per minute. So we can set up champagne export then. Again, I don't know what I'm going to import uh, to make sense of this, but I think soap is the one that makes most sense because... Or is it, well, yeah, we just have 169 soap. So yeah, these values look fine. Uh, most of this will be sold off to Eli. Uh, that's 550, which will open up these other things. So I can export weird things like... Uh, Let's see, uh, goulash, that will be required later on for the World's, World's Fair, so that's good. Um, this one, oh, these two will require another uh, trip from Tobias. Fur coats, not enough for that either, but I want to have the fur coats as an export, not an import. Spectacles. Oh, I have to import fur coats actually because I do want to be able to import spectacles. Uh, we can import coal and iron. Not that we need it. We can import clay. No, no. These require 12 active export imports. Oh, I have to. Oh, I actually have to import 1404. Oh, 1404. Ah, cement to, uh, to open that one. Gold, that would be an excellent thing to uh, import with uh, Tobias. Coffee, we have to import chocolate. And chocolate, we have to import plantains. Plantains is... Yep, we can import plantains after this. That will also be useful for... Um... I don't remember if the World's Fair requires plantains or if it's uh, fried plantains. But we'll import the plantains because we need them. Yeah, there's a lot of things here that I'm not going to go through all this. Glass, we could also um, import glass, actually, because that will save me a lot of hassle when it comes to uh, setting up more glass production chains. Since beach area on the chateau is uh, definitely limited, I could also just tear down all of the uh, fish industries, of course, and start importing the fish, but um, for now, at least not yet. Let's have a look at our expeditions. I knew this crew wouldn't let you down. We get an arctic wolf, a lionfish, and a pelican. We can uh, drop these things off and uh, move the ship On our way. here. The mark of dread upon us. Uh, let's find the culprit. Good, good, good. We have a common garden fox on board the vessel. Next expedition. Ah, the labyrinth. Uh, okay, humble passage. Swan door. No. Uh, leap. Uh, descend. Swiftly cross. Open the door. Strike your last match. Stand absolutely still. Go 
Okay. Now that is the one that we did on our way to um, Enbeza. Uh, if I hadn't done that on my way to Enbeza, then I would have now been offered the uh, blue bull artifact item that we got back then. But I don't think it offers it more than once. Uh, yeah, let's talk him after the inspection. Uh, we don't really need that, to be honest. I know, having them sail around with 50 tons of cement is maybe a bit weird on a expedition, but that 20 crafting was uh, necessary, so... Ching does have a mission for us. Altruism? There is nothing Apparently it's just a gift. Yet another of those jade amulets. That's the third one. Uh, okay, we have built champagne cellar. We have set up the dock plants. We have upgraded this. 4,446. That's not bad. However, I don't really see the uh, the use of um, having that. So let's downgrade that into a public mooring again. It'll give us the same income, but half the upkeep cost. So we should put in items in here. We have Jafan which is uh, minus 50% maintenance cost, so that'll reduce it even further, and 10% more visits. We have the travel agent, which is 20 attractiveness for the island, and 7% more visits. We have the souvenir seller, which is 25% less maintenance cost, and 15 attractiveness. And we can also put in the railway repair crane. Not that I have any repair cranes here yet, but uh, we can build one. No, that's up here. Repair crane. Let's rotate that the correct way. Ooh, now we have a repair crane. So ships that come in here can be repaired. Excellent. I don't think I've built any. I think, yeah, I might have built a couple extra of these lumberjack huts. And I also had to set up a uh, commute up here on this island and on this island because of the workforce. Haven't upgraded any more buildings to investors yet. I want to have the <clears throat> champagne up and going, which I now do. We have to co uh, start considering cigars and chocolate. This one is good enough. Jewelry. We're going to buy the gold from Anne. Yeah, so the, the next thing is cigars, actually. And after that, we have chocolate. The steam carriages probably won't be for a couple of episodes yet. Jewelry. It's not really a requirement, as per se. We don't have any, though. Um, I don't remember... No. There, there was one way that I could produce jewelry for free. Is that a, a trade union item, I wonder? I keep being interrupted by all these people. Go away. Leave me alone. Ah, yeah. Chronometrist Chiara. But she affects uh, clockmakers. Well, that's not the one I'm looking for. To sound of the steam engineer, she's absolutely necessary before I even touch cab assembly lines. Same with Johan the inventor for gramophone factories. I don't remember which one it was. Ceasefire has ended. Let's see here, control. Uh, jewelers. François Strindberg removes P 
pearls from jewelers. That's that's interesting. Sana Bright Woman, she's good as well, but she's not the one that I'm thinking of. You know, I don't know. Ah, uh, yeah. It's uh, Goldsmith Gilbert who replaces the gold with gold ore, which is a, a rather nice uh, replacement. But the same happens with the illust illustrious gemologist. The only thing that's different is that Goldsmith Gilbert gives an additional five attractiveness. So, rather, an additional two attractiveness. So he's not really that much better. I think the illustrious gemolo gemologist should actually be very simple. Processing gold ore instead of gold? Who sells gold ore? Yeah, that's Eli. 1250. Versus buying gold from Anne at 2770. I don't think that's a very hard decision. Finding the um, gemologist should be pretty easy. What I, I like checking these quests every now and again because sometimes he can offer some in insane rewards. Dream of wide blue horizons? Oh uh. really? You're as naughty as the children. Of course I am, Bento. Of course I am. I. Wanted to build something else, but I don't remember what. Let's have a trip to the new world and see what our island here can provide us. Maybe we should get up the rum distillery production here, because if we get up rum, I can also use rum as a an export. So this island does not have tobacco, but it does have coffee, which is definitely something we need. Do this for me. See, I wouldn't ask if I could do it myself. Need to photograph a clipper. There you go. Way to go. Quality coffee beans. Need to sell those. <laughs> this island here has cocoa and I sugar. This, crew wouldn't let you down. this island here has pearls and cocoa. Yes, this island then. No. Where's the tobacco fertility? This island is horrible. Okay, we have to go all the way down to this island to get tobacco. The tobacco farms do take a bit of a space. This island is nice for gold too. Two mines that close is uh, isn't. And oh, yeah, this island is definitely good for gold. Even though it is two trade unions, which at the current moment is not acceptable. Uh. How about this island also has this tobacco fertility? But this does not look like a good place to build. How about this one? It does have tobacco. Yeah, this one is definitely decent as well. Although this one is definitely the one I prefer. This one is absolutely horrid, uh, but does have tobacco. That is weird. All three islands up here, and none of them have tobacco. Tobacco is actually going to be a uh, all for southern island. It's going to be a uh, um, one of those goods that is in uh, demand. I might actually have to set up a, a docklands down here. Oh, I can't. I can't set up docklands. In the new world. Interesting. You can set up docklands on all your islands, but not the ones in the new world. Can I set up docklands? Well, I would. I would have to unlock elders to be even be able to see whether I could set up docklands in Embeza, but I suspect I can't. It's probably only the old world and um, Crown Falls, or rather Cape Trelawney. That are the locations where I can set up docklands then.
Right, but that means we need to... Uh, let's do these expeditions. We are getting another arctic wolf, a sperm whale, and a bearded vulture. Right. Let's un unload these. Would be nice to just get this off. But since that doesn't work, I'm going to just dump it in the ocean. Final expedition. We have one more, but it hasn't returned yet. Helmet jellyfish, the goblin shark, aka Wally, and a wild beast. Okay, so the um, the uh, additional schnapps I'm going to um, send off down to Anne Harlow for trade. Go. Set it down there. there you go. I'm sorry that this episode has been a bit uh, all over the place and not very much action and a lot of talking. Uh, but yeah, I am a little bit distracted due to stuff going on in real life, as I, I mentioned in the beginning of the episode. So um, I hope you'll forgive me for that. I will let you know what is going on when the time is right. We are getting a tiger spotted stanopia. Whatever that is, it's apparently an orchid. A red tiger lotus, which is part of the Near East set, and the purple pitcher plant, which is part of the Amazonas set. I don't know if the Amazonas set is one that I want. No, it isn't. Nor is the Near East, so didn't get anything useful as per se. But, even though it might not be... Gee, no. Even though it isn't exactly useful in terms of sets, I do believe that I do want to say this hemp here can definitely be switched out with a red tiger lotus. Uh, the sacred set is one that I definitely want, but we need more items from it and the ones that we need is a uh, one epic and one legendary uh, can swap out that one with the tiger spotted stanopia the water lily we can swap out with the purple pitcher plant that gives us a little bit more attractivity from the botanical garden and we can check out the uh, zoo at the same time i have the tiger forest uh, which reduces all needs by five percent or rather the food needs by five percent it's not the best, but I mean, why not? Uh, this blobfish is part of the Abyssal Depths set, and it's the only one we have in there, so let's replace it with a goblin shark instead. Okay, I can't take that out, but we have two tigers, so we'll have a bearded vulture and a sperm whale instead. As for the rest, there is no benefit or drawbacks to replacing except for these two which are part of the set but having reduced needs for fish bread canned food sausages and chocolate when that time comes eh, it's not bad i'm not going to complain about it. it as i said it could be better but i'm not going to complain about it uh, as for the artifacts i have i think i have equipped the ones that i want equipped Do i have any sets here Okay, so I don't have the ones that I want to equip. Then. Let's put this um, Umanak Mummy. Sure. Uh, Imperial Eagle Mosaic. And a Dionysian Mosaic, which, uh, I mean... Of course. I mean, that isn't tentacles. It might be um, Echidna. Or it might be a Hydra or Medusa, I'm not sure. This one we can replace with the Shroud of the Great King. That's about 436, that's pretty decent actually. With just 10 modules. Then again, two legendaries. 
But yeah, I hope you guys will forgive me that this episode wasn't the most uh, action-filled in terms of uh, what happened. Uh, I am going to open up um, Cape Chaloni. I'll do the Sunken Treasures expedition off-camera. And I'll settle an island in the New World um, so we can get uh, cigar production up and running. And also maybe... Uh, I think we'll just import the gold from Anne for now, actually, because the gold chain is a pain. Can't show it here, but let's see. Let's see, let's see. Just quickly before we end the episode. I do have... Somewhere I should have a tab... Apparently, I don't have that tab anymore. Yeah, I need I need more coffee because Madame Kahina is actually supplying five tons per minute because I'm not in the late game yet. I'm in the late mid game. It's five per minute in the late mid game, six in the late game, and seven in the end game. So I definitely need coffee. Uh, let me just see here. I need to check out... Uh, Production chains and investors jewelry. Yeah, that is, that is just chart, bury my desk. Thank you. Okay, so the, the ultimate setup for this is to get it everything in equilibrium is ten gold mines. One coal mine, four goldsmiths, six pearl farms, and two jewelers. And that'll give me four tons of jewelry per minute. Now, of course, that is not a big uh, issue. Four tons of jewelry can supply in 9,500 investors, so that's fine. Um, but ten gold mines is a bit of a pain. Why do you only need four gold per minute? I believe, uh, let's see, Anne Harlow. She can supply up to six tons per minute. So she can supply three tons per minute now, and then four in the next stage and six when I have more than 1,000 investors. Actually, I might be in stage where she supplies four per uh, minute. I, I, I am in that one. I am in that one. Because I did buy advanced weapons of her at an outrageous price, but I don't want to produce them myself because the upkeep for the advanced weapons chains is like 10,000 per minute, and I'm not interested in paying that because I don't need to build that many battlecruisers. So, yeah, no. Uh, I'll just buy them of her instead. So she can supply four tons per minute, which is actually what we need. If I just add six pearl farms, uh, that is enough for two jewelry, uh, jewelers. But I think producing four jewelry per minute is a tad overkill because I'm not going to have 9,500 investors anytime soon. So uh, that should be fine. But with all that out of the way and uh, a rather bumbling around episode, <laughs> If you have any questions and or comments, and yes, you are allowed to complain about my bumbling around in this episode. It's fine if you do, and I can see why you would want to do so. Um, but please don't lose interest in the series just because of this one bumbling episode. Uh, there are reasons for it, and I, I didn't want to have nothing, because something is better than nothing, and I did want to give some updates on what's going on. That at least I have achieved. So yeah, leave those in the comment section, the complaints. <laughs> but also, of course, any uh, any other comments or, or questions as well. Uh, hopefully there won't be any complaints, but it would be understandable. With that, I hope that you enjoyed this bumbling episode. And I also hope to see you all in the next one. Have a good one, everyone. <laughs>